hats is not completely random. It's because you're in a drama, Franklin. Yes. Which is, there's a lot of stuff on the head going on. Wigs and hats. Well, as you well, can see, so I'm rocking a rather fetching ginger wig there. Yeah, that, when I went out to Paris to do the makeup test, they put us about, they tried four different looks, four different wigs. One of which made me look alarmingly like my nan. So <laughs> thankfully they didn't go for that. But we opted for the ginger choice because I think it complemented the colours in the costume. Would you like to, just in case your nan is watching, would you like to say there's nothing wrong with looking like, like your nan? There's nothing wrong with that and there's nothing wrong with ginger people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is starting to... Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, just shall we help you out of your <laughs> little hole you've dug now? This is gone, yeah, help me out. Get uh, me out. Let's explain. That's what we're here for. The drama is called Franklin. Yes. The big star alongside yourself is none other than Michael Douglas. Let's give people a little look. We'll chat. OK. I suppose there's no point in warning you again. That I must forgo drinking meat. That I must seek pleasure in small amusements. Uh, except that which I cannot alter. Yes, I've never liked an articulate patient. Vision toys with me. He will help us after we win. But we cannot win unless he helps us. All I've actually accomplished is sending a young fool to his death. You can't hold yourself to account for that. Boys like Lafayette will seek their fate one way or the other. And God rest his soul. Was he ticklish? Did he have ticklish feet? Uh, he wasn't ticklish. He was an absolute superstar to work with, though. I mean, to get to work with... Someone of, uh, you know, Michael's stature. He's a bona fide Hollywood superstar, isn't he? He's a legend. So, um, and he was just a complete team player, you know. He was... Uh, I, and I've grown up watching all of his performances throughout the years, like Fatal Attraction and Falling Down, but he was just an absolute dream to work with. Did he have good stories? You know, you kind of... When you're with he did. a veteran of yeah. the industry... And, you know, he's been around and he's, he's very cool. He was a great raconteur. He would talk a lot about his dad and all of the... Um, uh, sort of films that he's been in, yeah. So he was just an absolute joy from start to finish. I have been lucky enough to interview Michael Douglas in the past. Oh, right. And I remember, and it doesn't all that hap happen all that often, where with a big movie star, and yeah. I know this is a TV series, but he is yeah. a movie star, yes, isn't he? Of that kind of era. The voice and the look and everything, it, it took me a little while. It's quite taken aback by it, because, it, like you said before, you're... He's, he's so familiar, everything about yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Did I you mean, have that moment when... I don't know when you first met. Well, I, I got cast in it and then the dates get, kept getting pushed back, so I thought, this thing's never going to begin. And then all of a sudden it happened and I was there my first day on set out in Paris and I had a huge dinner party scene. It was a big sort of four-page scene with myself, Michael and Noah Duke. And uh, it was a great scene because it just threw me into the deep end. But when I initially saw him, I was like... Oh, my God, it's Michael And Douglas. it's the voice as well. It's a it very, is the voice. very recognisable Yeah, voice and I had too. to sort of, you know, get hold of myself because I had to do the scene. So, um, but it, it was... Um, I mean, Franklin's just an amazing new um, period drama on Apple TV about Benjamin Franklin's eight-year stay in uh, Paris where he has to elicit aid, money and arms for the, from the French uh, monarchy to help fight Great Britain in the uh, Revolutionary War. So it's an amazing... I mean, it was like Franklin's biggest gamble of his career and it's one big, long seduction of the French court and there's espionage and, you know, uh, um, late-night rendezvous and all that sort of stuff. There's a lot going on. It's a thrilling, edgy uh, new show. What's your history like? Are you a history buff? Um, I, I didn't necessarily know a lot about this period, but That's that right, was you what, can't know about everything. That, that was one of the great uh, thrills about being part of this show is that you, you know, in terms of the research, you pour over that and you feel like you've learnt so much by the end of the process. Tell me your timeline of, in terms of how busy you've been, because I've been fortunate enough to see you in Guys and Dolls. Oh, right, yeah, lots which, of people did see it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was very, very yes. popular. Um, and then when did you film this? Because I'm trying to figure out how busy you've been, whether you were tired, because you just made, like, 300 shows with Guys and no, Dolls. No, no. This was before. Guys and Dolls was just before I went over to Paris to shoot Franklin. And um, in actual fact, Michael was one of the people that suggested I take the role. I'd had a Zoom chat with Nick Heitner, the director of Guys and Dolls, and 
and, and my, I was on set the following day and I hadn't decided whether I was going to take the role of Nathan Detroit. And Michael was like, uh, what are you doing next? And I said, it's a musical, Guys and Dolls. And he went, Guys and Dolls? He said, what role? I said, Nathan Detroit. He said, you're doing it? I went, I haven't decided. He went, you're doing it, Danny. You're not taking no for an answer. Too right. Yeah. Can I just be clear? That's Michael Douglas. Yes, he was Michael giving... Michael Douglas was giving you he career He was giving advice. me career what? advice. I mean, it was quite a surreal moment with him sitting there dressed up as Benjamin Franklin, yeah. <laughs> And, uh, and Michael and Catherine Zeta-Jones both came to see the show. I had a break for three months in the summer and they came to the last show before that break and uh, it felt like everything had gone full circle and they were so gracious with their time and had photos with the cast. Do I don't you... mind a bit of name-dropping, it's absolutely fine. I yes, don't mind well, it at all. Good. I've worked with Catherine Zeta-Jones as well, you know, <laughs> on Dad's arm. Now, you, know. we, you started off talking about the wigs. I'm not sure that we've seen full wiggage so far and the bits we've seen right. because some of the ladies have... Uh, uh, and of its era, the most extraordinary things going on top of her head. Well, there and is a woman with a ship in her head. With a ship on top yes, of her that's head. Yes, And I'm I mean... only, I can only assume that weather must have had a bearing on how you... Because you're shooting outdoors, there must have been times and that is quite tricky. Yeah, I mean, listen, the, the level of craftsmanship that's gone into this piece in terms of the costume and makeup, set design... I mean, you know, I've been in a few period dramas in the past, but none so as lavish as this and it just you know when you're acting in that sort of get up it's it just helps you immeasurably to get into character you can pour over the research and do all your character beats but when they put you in a wig like that and you're in high heels and you're wearing a cane all of that just sort of transports you to a different time and place you know often when we talk to female actors in period dramas we we do ask them you know what's it like because you've got the corsets and everything's yeah. really tight and everything How i said no to the corset <laughs> No, I didn't work. The high heels... Everyone thinks you said yes to what, the court. What, 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 um... No-one's going to judge you if you did. The thing is, with high heels, your whole deportment is shifted forward. Yeah, and you've I got actually, to stick your hips out. I got out. terrible lower back pain towards the end of the... How, uh, how high were you going? They were a fair height. They, they were very high. But you're yeah. so, that's like six inches. Yeah, they were... That's a was, big heel. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know how you do it. How do you get on with it, Charlie? And, 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 <laughs> Charlie's fine. On your weekend, no one can see it behind the desk. So well, okay, no one so can see. So you had heels, <laughs> stockings, yes, knickerbockers, type yeah, thing. Um, frock coats. Cane. I mean, the whole going through the whole process of costume and makeup took about an hour. And you know. hot because the wigs are heavy. Yeah, they as well. kind of they actually sort of stuck the, the wig on on clips, and then you get your face painted with rosy cheeks. You had more makeup on than. <laughs> They pile on to me yes, for this program. Yes, I'm I giving mean, you a you look a bit money. ridiculous in in some. Is that is that a real reflection of kind of how they were? Because they were so extreme. Yeah, I think it was just embracing that time and place. You know, wigs at that era weren't they? Were perceived a lot like a hat and stuff, wasn't it? It was. Um, uh, they just you know embodied that. And... There's a scene, isn't there, when the young? I think it's uh, Franklin's grandson. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is being pampered and prepared in a French style. Yes. And they put a kind of a nozzle thing uh, when they're powdering him, just so his eyes. Are yes, not it's like a and mask. Then and, then, and then they powder powdering. the whole. The, the, they put the wig on, put the mask on, and then powder the whole. Yeah, lot. I've yeah, never yeah. seen that before, but I assume that's yeah. just how it was. I done. did that just before I came on set. Can you not tell? <laughs> <It's> can <working>. tell. <laughs> can tell. It's absolutely working. <laughs> What's next then? What are you working on now? Uh, well, I'm putting my feet up, having a bit of a break. There's uh, no been... no A-listers giving you advice. As no, to what no, no, no. I'm going to go take. to Belgium and shoot this thing called Bookish with the brilliant Mark Gatiss, which they I can say that because they announced it a couple of days ago. I was a bit worried there. Um, so Another that's next actor. in line, and um, I've got a great period drama called Welcome, not Welcome to the Punch, just another thing. Uh, I've completely forgotten the name of it. I'll come back to you. Yes. Uh, tell me one other thing that Michael Douglas in a TV series, I mean, it's not the f he's not the first really big movie star to do TV, but it's, it's good, isn't it? Because it, it, it's, cha it's a change, you know. I, I think that the thing is the. The gap between film and television now is kind of non-existent, really. I mean, television in its own right is such a, a powerful medium now. The thing is, you get a huge amount of time, but screen time. You know, this is eight episodes, Franklin, and you get, you know, someone like Michael Douglas to play the lead, and it's, you know, he has that time and space to fully develop the character. It's and, filmic, isn't it? Yeah, it's give, it, give it all the nuance that you need, so... Yeah, the gap has closed. But I think, you know, there's always space for great cinema as well. So um, it's always a balancing act.
Lovely having you on the sofa. A thousand blows was that period drama that I forgot. There oh, you well go. Done. I've got it in. They, I they won't be it. upset with you. <laughs> no, they <don't. laughs> If I wish you'd brought the wig in. Yes, no, I left it. it. I, le I didn't. I, I left it in Paris. It, it, it traumatised me that much. That I sounds couldn't... like a movie in itself. I left <laughs> yeah, it in left Paris. It in yeah. Paris. <laughs> Coming soon. Daniel Mace, nice thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, Franklin's out on Apple TV Plus today. Uh,